Howard's art scene. Photography as fine art. Another way of expressing myself in terms of a non-linear or non-verbal experience. I think art has changed dramatically. I believe that high technology has really affected the art world. On the other hand, other artists are not able to really make a living whatsoever at all. The visual impact of the artwork is most important. Swimming is art. I sometimes wonder what my own perception is. To achieve what you want in art may take an entire lifetime. I'm an artist interested in various art forms, including photography, video, silkscreen, and painting. All of the work I do, however, is oriented in photography. This is the painting studio. I was born in New York City, but I began my professional career in art when I was 17 years old when I moved to San Francisco. I lived in a renovated factory building in a Mexican ghetto and created these photographic sculptures while teaching photographic classes. I continue using photography today to help create my acrylic paintings, combining photographic silk screens, airbrush, and freehand work. When I was 21 years old, this enormous photographic mural entitled Analyses of Realities, which is 16 feet by 16 feet, containing over 80 photographic pieces ranging in size from 1 inch to 40 inches, was hung in the San Francisco Civic Center at the Art Commission Gallery. The critics from the San Francisco Chronicle and New York's Village Voice newspapers both described this in their reviews as an experimental photography of amazing ability. My next step was combining the photographic construction with silkscreen printing. And these pieces, four years later, were exhibited here on 57th Street in Manhattan. When people respond to the work through exhibitions, it's a good feeling. But true real happiness comes through making the work itself. The gratification of making something which pleases me cannot be satisfied or substituted in any other way. I sometimes wonder what my own perception is and try to understand my own perception. I use the artwork to understand that. By looking at these paintings myself, it's, it's, I go through the experience, I make the thing, I don't understand really what it is about myself. I create it, then later I go back and look at it to see what I've really done and to understand why I've actually done that thing. It becomes a record of my subconscious or a record of my concerns that are filtered through my experience that comes out later in the artwork. I look at the artwork and try to figure out why I made that at that time and what that means to me. So the process itself is the, the, where the satisfaction comes from, but then ultimately the understanding of myself comes from the analyzation of the picture once it's completed. These photographs were created by projecting light on the back of plastic sheets which had various patterns on them. The results were blown up into striking large-scale photographs. Reality is whatever you think it is, or whatever you create it to be.
So the painting for me is like one way of dealing with reality because I'm able to be introspective and the video is another way of dealing with my reality because it's, it's extrovert. Uh, meeting 100 people or 200 people or making the videotapes in the different cities is one way of dealing with my own understanding of myself and the painting is another way of dealing with my own understanding of myself. It's two different things that make it then be one for me to understand who I am and, and what I want to achieve in my life. This is where I do my editing. And first I go out and do the photography or the, uh, the shooting of the galleries and people that are in the galleries. And I come back here and transfer from the uh, three quarter inch deck to the half inch deck. And then I do maybe 60, 70 hours of each videotaping uh, editing here prior to going to the studio. Then I go to the studio, do about 10 hours of editing there, and put the titles on it to actually do the, you know, the true editing or the finished product. Um, I think I get my, actually my, my greatest satisfaction out of making the videos more than the painting, photography, and the silk screening. I've had the opportunity to make videotapes with a lot of really great artists, including Keith Haring, Christo, Namjoon Pike, Lowell Nesbitt, and Kenny Scharf. All these people help me understand myself. The demystification of art through contact with other artists enabled me to come to terms with my own photography as an art form. In making the videos, the people in the videos themselves become my medium. I use them to say what I feel as if that I want to be saying to the world. When, I, when they say something that I can recognize or that I believe to be true, I then transfer that into the finished, the finished edited version so I can actually say what I feel to be real through them and through their words. So in, in essence, the people that are in the video become my medium themselves, as you know, the painting becomes my medium in order to say what I want, or the uh, photography becomes my medium to say what I want in the finished work. In the video, the people, when they say something, or if they repeat something over and over again that I don't agree with, within time, I believe that to be real because it's a consensus. So I use the video as the other artworks to analyze myself and how I see the world through the eyes of other people. These photographs were created by cutting up the same photograph as negative and positives and assembling them together. I think art has changed dramatically in terms of uh, when I had first began art about 20 years ago. And in terms of people actually pursuing now art for their career more than just pursuing it for the love of art. Uh, I think as time goes on from you know, what we had known from uh, the conceptual artists or surrealism or impressionism, I think those artists actually created artwork just for their own satisfaction rather than for monetary income. But now people are making astronomical amount of money from actually making artworks and as a result people are pursuing this as an end in itself. It's a double-edged sword. When you're trying to say philosophically what you believe to be, what you think should be said in terms of an idea that should be manifest in the artwork, and the other one you're dealing with trying to survive as you're doing that. So it's hard actually to make both of those worlds come together as one. But people that just pursue their philosophical ideas, I think, are doing the most noteworthy or the most satisfying pursuit and then ultimately they will be rewarded either emotionally or economically in the long run anyway. Silk screening bridges the gap between photography and painting. I'm able to do this process to get results similar to painting utilizing renditions which can only be derived from the camera. Silk screening is also enjoyable to do because it's so much more filthy and tactile so much more so than photography or video.
Most of the people who are in my silk screens are people I've come across over my lifetime. They're basically my friends and I've come to photograph them over the years. And to remember them, I've always made a silk screen. And if they've died, or if they lived on, or if I'm no longer their friend, or I still am, I at least have a record of my involvement with them during that time period. So my silk screens for me somehow become a log, or a collection, or portraits of my friends. I use silk screening to remember the past and the present so I can preserve it for the future. I'm beginning to think that all art is that. Somehow preserving the past to enjoy it in the present so you can remember it in the future. I love silk screening because it is so different from video or photography. I like cleaning up the mess and getting involved with it. Photography is so clinical and video is even worse. The difference is what I like about this because it is so different. I hate repeating myself or doing the same thing too many times. That's why I work in all different kinds of areas of art. I got started as an artist by doing photography. One thing led to another and I wound up doing the painting, the video, and the silk screening. But my first love was always photography. I learned about myself by doing it. I learned my weaknesses and my strengths. I'll never forget what photography taught me. What photography taught me about myself. I had worked on many, many projects in photography since I had begun art. But the most interesting photographic project I'd ever worked on was the found painting series. I would go into industrial areas for months on end looking for paintings people had made that had no interest in making art. I would then photograph the paintings these people had made and create artworks out of them. Found paintings. I went out and found what they were doing, and when I found what they were doing, after they had left their mark, quote unquote, I then documented what they had done. So for me, it began with being a photograph, fine art photography, which then I used the process of documentation for. However, it's a picture of something which is literal on one hand, because that's what existed in reality. On the other hand, it becomes abstract once the picture is taken, once the documentary is made. Uh, as a conceptual thing, I think this is a found object, and a found object has essence in conceptual art. Found paintings took about seven months to create of walking around, 
uh, on a daily basis going and looking and, and searching and hoping for uh, some type of, of work to be located that was made by another individual without having any concern for art, which then would eventually turn into art. Swimming is art. If I'm able to achieve that highest experience, the highest way of being intellectually, then that helps me in my physical state. If I'm able to achieve a higher level physically, that helps me in my mental or my emotional state. So it's all one. My mental state and my physical state are one. And for me, the development of one or the other through the swimming or through art itself is conjunctive and becomes swimming becomes art for me. Every time an artist exhibits his work, he in a sense challenges the viewer to understand what he's doing. He challenges himself every time he actually makes an artwork in terms of is he able to get to a higher level of what he had done previously. Is he able to make another picture, another artwork, another sculpture that's somehow going to create something that's going to be better than what he had made before. He challenges himself. An artist challenges himself every time he attempts to make another artwork greater than the last one he had done. Swimming is a lot that way. If you swim a little bit further each time and you try to get a challenge as greater than the last challenge, you're able to meet that challenge, then you've evolved, you've gone higher, you've created something that's more significant than what you had done before, and as a result, then you've gotten to a higher level physically. And so art and physical activity are in a sense of a similar nature because each day you have to progress a little bit further, a little bit more demand in order to meet a challenge that's greater than the day before. So when I call swimming art, for me it is the same psychology and the same way of dealing with the ability to get to a higher level, to get to a higher state. I call this the gates of Hades on some days. If you got the current right though, you can make it. If not, you might get washed out to see or wash all the way down to Alcatraz. But if you perceive it correctly and watch the buoy, you can make it to the other side. It doesn't take that much effort if you just do it every day and practice each day at another beach down there. It's shark-infested waters, but without a challenge, nothing is worth pursuing. Swimming the gate is the same way. To achieve what you want in art may take an entire lifetime of going through an experience that maybe you don't think is ever going to pay off. But in time, if you keep on doing it, keep on pursuing it, you learn more about yourself, you learn more about what's going on in your own mental state. So swimming is a lot like that. Each day you pursue it, it gets a little bit better, a little bit stronger. You get a little stronger physically, and then as time goes on, you're able to understand yourself emotionally better because you put up with what's necessary to get to the other side. I believe that high technology has really affected the art world in a big way because prior to this time, people really didn't know what was going on in different parts of the country or different parts of the world of what other artists were doing at different places. But now, an artist that's in Podunk knows exactly what's going on in New York, an artist that's going on in New York knows what's happening in Italy, an artist in Italy knows what's going on in LA through the publications, through the video, through. Uh, means of, of communication through mail, all different ways of dealing with high technology as well as uh, the ability to communicate has expanded in the 20th century, so art is no longer, in a sense, regional. Everyone can know what's going on in another place at the same time. Now, through the use of the computer, we're able actually to communicate with a vast amount of people. High technology has really affected the art world, I think, to a great degree in terms of not only what is being made, by high technology being used as a medium, but as well as high technology enabling people to communicate on a mass scale. 
the communication enables ideas to filter from artist to artist or from area to area so people actually can expand their way of, of perception, expand their way of dealing with their own art by uh, understanding what other artists are doing elsewhere through the ability to communicate. So high technology is not only enabling artists to expand their aesthetics or expand their ideas by being able to communicate with other artists, high technology is adding another medium to the already existing mediums which are the palette of artists of today. Other art forms which were crossover art forms between disciplines have now become acceptable as mediums for artists to be working. In other words, an artist can be working in video in conjunction with painting or painting in conjunction with performance, performance in conjunction with sculpture, and sculptures become conceptual. So there's no longer a delineated difference between one medium and another. The escalation of art and the escalation of the acceptance of art or the dissemination of art into these a culture has become so great now, it has different neighborhoods in different cities that are dedicated specifically to art. Well, previously, there was very few places that were even dedicated to photography or art at all. Uh, now there's whole areas or whole neighborhoods that are dedicated to art. So I think that all in all, things have really changed and things have really escalated as far as people's involvement with art and, and uh, the amount of artists that exist today than uh, 20 years ago, and I have no idea what it would have been like 20 years or 50 years before that. I think basically the situation is escalating further and further and further until I think there's going to be a breaking point soon, but we haven't actually hit the plateau yet. The understanding of oneself, and the understanding of the world, and the understanding of economics can be based in art itself as any other philosophical pursuit can be. It all becomes one at a certain point without really trying. As you then make one thing, it leads to another thing, it leads to another idea, it leads to another idea, and, and then while you're doing this, you're in the process of trying to survive simultaneously. So the idea of what you're doing and the idea of making more art is really what the process of what artists are really expected to do and what I'm hoping to do myself. In other words, be able to continue what I'm doing to the next step always being able to expand to the next idea without being stifled. So sometimes then the ability to get materials or the ability to formulate the idea and then put it into action becomes almost impossible for some artists because their income is so negligible that they can't really progress to the next state that they wish to, to express themselves. So on the other hand, there are other artists that are getting astronomical fees for their uh, artworks, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and uh, on the other hand, other artists are not able to really make a living whatsoever at all. Some people still pursue art as a labor of love, but for most individuals, they're hoping that art will lead them to gratification economically. In reality, though, that is not a, a rational pursuit or a realistic pursuit. As time goes on, though, it does become more re realistic, but to hope for that and to pursue that really puts a tarnish or a tainting of what the idea is of why an artist really will create something. An artist should create from his heart. An artist should create from love. An artist should create something that they believe in that they're trying to express in their artwork, not make something that they think they're going to be able to sell. what art is totally. That's why I'm interested in it. I'm, I'm not sure if I'll ever really truly be able to understand what art is. Because art is like so many different things, I don't know if it's ever possible really to understand all of it. So, but I'm beginning to get some inkling of what it is. And I realize now that it's not money. It's not dealing with a value system that is the value system in terms of money. It's doing something that you feel as if has some reason for you to do it, other than economic reasoning. That is the true essence of art. It's kind of like creating something that you feel as if that 
should be done, that should be stated, and you don't really care if you really get a return for it, you're going to do it anyway. A true artist will do whatever they're going to do no matter what it is, even if they're going to starve. They don't care what it is. They're going to make those artworks anyway because they have to do it. somehow when I create artworks that I make myself be more of an individual than if, if I didn't make the artworks. I find myself through the artworks and in doing that it enables me to realize things that, realize things I never would have realized if I had not uh, pursued art. So things that were buried in my mind, things that I wasn't sure really existed, things that I wasn't sure really were true, I'm able to find those things to be true for myself. I'm able to see a visual reality that I wouldn't be able to normally see. I'm able to see a moral reality that I wouldn't normally be able to see. So in pursuing art, all of my morals and all of my values are reestablished in terms of what I believe to be real or what I believe to be moral rather than the morals that are set or the values set on me by society. And every time I find a new experience through the artworks, every time I find a new thing to be true in the artworks, I find something new or valuable about myself that I didn't understand. So by going to the next level of the artwork, by going to the next level of my experience through them, by graduating to the next aesthetic, by pursuing the next experience, I find out what I need to find out to satisfy myself so that in the long run I'll be able to understand more about what I feel is, is true or what I feel is more valid for myself. That's why it's necessary. That's why I'm, I'm driven. I'm just like driven on to find more, to realize more, and to experience more, to come in contact more with my true feelings. That's why I keep on trying to evolve to the next step, the next level, the next understanding of myself through the art. Art scene.